violence and other kind of violence. What's good, YouTube? It's the Black Gen Z Mindset. Make sure you go ahead and like, comment, share, subscribe, and let's get into the video. WRL's Aaron Thomas says another Amber Alert is canceled after a two-year-old boy was found safe and his mother, a murder suspect, was arrested. WRL's Aaron Thomas joins us live in Clayton where the mother is accused of killing her grandmother. And Aaron, the search came to an end in Georgia today. Yeah, that's right, Julianne. In fact, it came to an end that mother and the two-year-old little boy, her son, was found safe. For those familiar... So I told you guys about this case, and this woman murked her grandma or the mother of... I think it was her grandma, right? over a custody battle, basically, over the child. With this case here, they are breathing, breathing a sigh of relief knowing that that child is safe. I wanna take you now to the home of Anita Gaither. She's the grandmother who sadly died after all of this. You can see the flowers and candles outside her home. I did make contact with her daughter. She tells me that she's thankful that the little boy was found, but ultimately, there's a lot of healing that needs to be done. Camille Singleton, the woman accused of shooting and killing her grandmother, was arrested in Georgia. Investigators with the South Fulton Police Department located her at a local Walmart at about 11 this morning. Police received a tip about a suspicious person who matched the description of Singleton. Her two-year-old son, Dior Singleton, was with her and located unharmed. Both were taken to the South Fulton Police Department. I'm relieved and happy that they were actually found. I'm glad that um, the baby is okay. And I wanted to speak to this because, man, <clears throat> the whole community is in shambles. Like, you you would think it's only dudes out here doing these shootouts. But time and time again, we have to report on stories where there are women out here on demon time. And they are about that action and getting busy in what they call putting in work in the streets. That was our major concern. Ronald Thomas knew Anita Gaither, the woman found dead inside her Clayton home Thursday. It, it, it's been a, a little struggle um, knowing that, that something like that happened to her because uh, she was so nice and, 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 and social. And here's another look at that memorial in honor of Miss Anita Gaither. You can see the flowers and candles here. Uh, her granddaughter, Camille Singleton, is expected to be transported to the Fulton County Jail. We're told that it's likely that family members will go and pick up that two-year-old little boy. Okay, so, I mean, at least the child doesn't become a part of the foster care system. But talk about endangering your child, and, and, and we talk about you know, woman getting custody and all this kind of stuff. And I mean, if, if, if the sisters is like that, man, they don't need to get custody. Like, because at the end of the day, she could have brought harm to that child. And it's not unlikely that we, I've done stories where these women will take their own children out because they don't want to bear the responsibility of taking care of them. And this is, this is the, um, the trauma that they speak about in the black community. It's not necessarily from police or white people or white supremacists. No, it's from each other. Um, and, you know, it, it's it's almost like ingrained in like like people will be like pe people respond to this story. Well, like, like it is what it is, man. That's just how it go, bro. I mean, and, and people will really be in the comment section talking about free her she ain't do nothing like this is the type of toxicity that we're dealing with in the community and it's super hard to combat that mentality especially when you have the women who are willing to boom get violent just like that and we're still working to learn when investigators here will have a singleton extradited back in north carolina julian once again so many people relieved that little dior is okay aaron thomas reporting Plus, they named the child Dior after a designer brand. It's just, <laughs> it's different. In Lime tonight in Clayton, thank you. Now at 5.30, it was eight days ago that a woman was shot by a safety officer outside a school in Long Beach. 
This afternoon, her family is making plans now to take her off life support, and they want the safety officer charged now with murder. So this story um, is coming from the, uh, you know, Cesar Chavez community, right? Hispanic woman murked by a resource officer because she pulled up to the school, which a school that she does not go to, and started and, and, and was fighting. This is that ratchet ghetto behavior that I be talking about on my channel. The family also says the district attorney here, George Gascon, is falling behind in filing that charge. Here's NBC4's John Caddis Klimak. To see the murderer who killed my sister in prison. Justice! When do we want it? Now! The family of 18-year-old Mona Rodriguez Put shouting with all their might outside yeah. the Hall of Justice in downtown L.A. in the hopes County District Attorney George Gascon could hear them. We have elected officials that we rely on for justice. And we need to see them play out their part. Rodriguez was shot and killed after fleeing a fight on the Millican High School campus last week in Long Beach. So as you can see, guys, I mean, she's she's a very attractive woman. She got a kid. So, you know, somebody, you know, they they, they ended up putting one in her because she fine. I mean, she looked good. But my thing is, why are these beautiful, attractive women in the black and brown community pulling up to schools and fighting, trying to relive that high school thing like it's different if you are a kid and you're fighting and you're a high schooler and you're fighting. But these are grown adults. Adults pulling back up to the high school. And a lot of times we talk about, you know, men pulling back up to the high school and, and, and um, you know, causing havoc or picking up the girls in the parking lot or whatever. But now we've got women pulling up, fighting in on behalf of some friends that they still have in high school. I mean... Can you get more ratchet, man? Cell phone video caught the moment a school safety officer opened fire on a vehicle. And look, the school safety officer is a black man. You can tell he's a black man. So we're not going to talk about racism or anything like that. It's not a factor of that. It's a factor that when she got in that vehicle, that vehicle became a dangerous weapon and that officer has the ability or has the angle to argue that he feared for his life he thought she was going to run him over so he fired at her it's unfortunate but that's when what happens when you move off of emotion a fight on the millican high school campus last week in long beach cell phone video caught the moment a school safety officer opened fire on a vehicle where rodriguez was a passenger you don't realize who's there for you until they're gone oscar rodriguez one of three brothers says the family is helping care for his five-month-old nephew that child is going to grow up with a, a abundance of love and i'll make sure of that and you know i feel bad for the family because i it's like somebody should have been there to be like, yo, that ain't a good idea. You a grown woman going in fighting high schoolers like you could you're going to be the one facing charges. They're not going to be facing nothing. The family is leaning on each other now for comfort while staring up at the office where they feel the only justice in this case could come. We've all seen the video. Where is George Gascon? Why isn't he here on the mic announcing charges against this man? Michael and Luis Carillo are representing the family and sent this letter to the DA asking why charges have yet to be filed more than a week after the shooting. George Gascon, he talks a big game about prosecuting killer cops. Well, this is the example that needs to be done. The Long Beach Unified School District says Rodriguez was not a student and they placed the officer on paid leave. And this school safety officer decided he was going to be the judge, the jury, and the executioner. And you know, I don't think that he had to use lethal force in that situation honestly i don't um <clears throat> but legally is it justified <laughs> i mean kinda kinda and this is what i talk about when the aggression in the black and brown community because these are the people who are claiming victim status in this country and this and the third we have women who are on this type of demon time we have women ready to set it off so what does that say about the culture that this violence um is ingrained in the woman now she pulled up to a high school that she doesn't attend to fight i mean 
the family needs to take some, uh, not the family, but they need to put some accountability on her too and say, hey, it's unfortunate that she felt like she had to do this. Long Beach police are investigating. If he's not going to bring justice to my sister, at least what is he doing right now so that this never happens to another family ever again? Um. Well, what y'all could do is teach your woman, teach your sister to chill. Why are you fighting with high schoolers? Why are you pulling up at the local high school to set it off? How about that? How about you teach her some home training, some home training, some some decency? The, like these are the situations where people don't like to take accountability when in all actuality, I, although I don't believe she deserved to lose her life, she was in the wrong. She was dead wrong. And she risked it knowing that she had a child, risking fighting, knowing she had a child, risking going to jail, knowing that she had a child. I mean, the mentality from downtown L.A. John Kennedy's Klimak, NBC. So anyways, guys, um, I want to show you this story as well. This employee at a fast food restaurant on LSU campus arrested after allegedly threatening the guest with a gun. So I'm going to read this article real quick. And he was at the Wendy's. So. And he was working at the Wendy's. So I don't know why it got set off like this, but let's get into it. Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Keith Johnson Jr. 21 was arrested in connection with an alleged altercation at Wendy's on the LSU campus. Um, deputies were made aware of the situation at Wendy's located at 101 Gateway Center Lane around 11 p.m. on October 2nd. The deputies were outside of the Wendy's when three individuals approached them and said someone inside the restaurant was threatening them with a gun. That someone turned out to be an employee of the Wendy's. Deputies entered the Wendy's and arrested Johnson. According to the LSU police, one victim stated she was engaged in a verbal argument with the manager when the defendant an employee walked to the back and returned with a bag. The victim stated that Johnson took a gun out of the bag and threatened her with it. A search of the bag and suspect uncovered a gun and marijuana. Johnson is facing these charges, carrying firearm in a firearm-free zone, aggravated assault, and simple possession of marijuana. Now, was this argument deep enough to pull the strap out on an unarmed employee? No. He's defending his manager. I get it. Um, but this is where you, you know, de-escalate the situation. Maybe call corporate. Maybe give them some free fries, some sea salt fries, a four for four, and keep it moving. But why do brothers in particular feel like they have to escalate to violence when there's a misunderstanding? Like, this, I guarantee this is this, this dude's mindset. Shit, they ain't finna try me at the, at the restaurant that I still, you know, I work here, bro. They ain't finna try me at my own job, bro. If they were in an argument with the manager, you're an employee. Let the manager handle that. And if he can't handle that, let him get his supervisor in. If the supervisor can't handle that, let him go in, um, you know, call corporate and see what they can do. What type of compensation they can do for the customers. Maybe the customers were wilding out, whatever. But... For you to put your own safety in jeopardy and the safety of others and your own livelihood over, you know, a misunderstanding about an order, this is the mindset that I'm trying to weed out with this channel. This is the mindset that I'm trying to address and, and, and let you guys know that, bro, don't be doing this, this goofy, dumb stuff over nothing. It was over nothing. But this brother is working at the Wendy's, felt like he got tried. And y'all know a lot of brothers feel like, man, can't nobody try me. I ain't finna let nobody try me. This is the mindset that leads you down a negative path. And, <laughs> you know, it looks like he was a rough around the edges dude. It looked like he was about that action. Look, I get it. I get it. You know, you don't want to get tried at your own workplace. But these dudes is out of control, man. And what if he had shot somebody? What if he had shot somebody, man? It, it's, it's just crazy, bro. It's just crazy, you know? But, hey, this is what's going down. This is what's going down in the black community, man. And, and it's, it's pretty upsetting 
Um, you know, and we we have to hold our guys accountable. Like, I wish there was an employee who said who stopped them and said, "Hey, man, you on the fries, bro? Stay on them fries. You you on you you know you 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 making a double stack, bro? Stay on them. Stay on that double stack. We got this. We got this, bro. We'll handle this. This ain't your job." Okay, he became, he tried to become security of the Wendy's. And, you know, unfortunately, he's paying for it. He got three charges. Honestly, they're pretty petty charges. Um, I mean, I'm not saying that it's not a big deal. Because it is, but these are charges that he could come back from. Um, that he could bounce back from. But a lot of times when these dudes catch three charges like this, like, they feel like everything's against them now and, and they end up quitting the job. And I mean, he's never going to work out of Wendy's again. That's for damn certain. Sheesh, but hey, man, at, at least he didn't shoot anybody. So you got to give him that. Johnson's murders have bounced around the court system for more than 25 years. ABC 17's news anchor Lucas Geisler takes us through the major moments of this case. Boone County woke up on February 13th, 1994 with three fewer people. Law enforcement found Mary Bratcher, Fred Jones, and Mabel Scruggs dead at the Casey's store on Rice Road in Ballinger Lane. Okay, so I've, I've been following this story because this was a murder that happened in 1994. This guy, Ernest Johnson, he basically beat these people to death um, for no reason. And people on social media, this is why I can't stand these brothers and sisters and these woke liberals on social media they are trying to get him a stay of execution because of mental illness or whatnot and this is what i'm saying we cannot give these 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 violent offenders the excuse of mental illness we can't because all it's gonna do is make everybody who do something take that excuse oh well i'm mentally ill and and i've had you know adhd and add and ocd and all this kind of stuff like people are going to use it all on bipolar they're going to use any type of ailment that they maybe are self-prescribed or prescribed by someone else to get out of facing the their accountability and in this situation he was basically trying to on social media they got it all wrong they're like oh let's stop the execution let's stop the execution well his argument is i i want the execution um to be in a different format they were going to give him lethal injection and he said he didn't want to die a violent death because the lethal injection because of his mental illness might cause him to seize up in this down and third but you know social media they they took that narrative and ran with it and now they're they were asking that he don't get executed at all. It kicked off a search throughout the city for who had killed the three and robbed the store. Later that day, officers questioned Ernest Lee Johnson about the deaths. They arrested him for the murders after comments he made about possibly being there that night. A jury convicted him in 1995 and sentenced him to death. But Johnson would be back in front of a jury on the issue of his punishment two more times, once in 1998 and again in 2006. The Supreme Court reversing his death sentence over the presentation of evidence on his intellectual disability. The U.S. Supreme Court ruled it unconstitutional for states to give people with mental disabilities the death penalty. And this is the unjust, unfair criminal justice system that people are trying to reform. And this, I mean, they could. I don't know how they can keep calling it unjust when they continually get, they continually make compensations for violent criminals who took the lives of three people man those people aren't coming back <clears throat> but and just because he had a mental illness we're gonna oh give him the benefit of the doubt man hell nah hell nah bro he need to face the consequences of his actions just like everybody else and this is what i can't stand with our community is that we go so hard for criminals but when it comes to law-abiding citizens oh you a square you a lame you a this that and the third like stitches get stitches all that it's crazy. The Missouri Supreme Court's Judge Ronnie White wrote in 2003, quote, Missouri cannot execute a person who is mentally deficient. Johnson has shown that ample evidence was available, but not sufficiently presented, establishing that his mental capacity is questionable, end quote. 
The 2006 jury still gave him the death penalty, and Johnson faced execution on November 3rd, 2015. Breaking news on the ABC 17 News at 10. Right now, the execution for a convicted Columbia killer is on hold. Justice Samuel Alito sent the case back to the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals for review, asking them to review whether Johnson had a legitimate claim that lethal injection would cause severe and painful seizures. Just hours before he was set to die, the U.S. Supreme Court stepped in. It said lower courts needed to further explore a new issue with Johnson whether scarring on his brain would cause painful seizures when given lethal injection. Look, at this point, you took three people out. Who cares? I mean, seriously, who cares if you have, uh, if, who cares if your death is, 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 um, you know, you're suffering through your death, bro. You beat three people to death with a hammer and black people and liberals and all this kind of stuff, black and brown community on social media, are talking about some, oh, you know, you know, just give him a life sentence <clears throat> or free him. He ain't do nothing or he doesn't deserve to be executed, bro. He took out three people, bro. Instead, Johnson wanted execution by nitrogen gas, which no state has ever used before. Those claims led him to the doorstep of the U.S. Supreme Court. But in 2020, the court decided in a different death penalty case that death row inmates could not force a state to use an untried execution method. Eventually, the high court turned down Johnson's case. A majority of justices would not let him go back and ask instead that the state kill him by firing squad. Justice Sonia Sotomayor disagreed and wanted to give Johnson another shot. She wrote, quote, Missouri is now free to execute Johnson in a manner that, at this stage of the litigation, we must assume will be akin to torture, given his unique medical condition, end quote. The Missouri Supreme Court also rejected what might be Johnson's last chance at avoiding lethal injection in August. The court said Johnson's evidence of a mental handicap was not convincing enough to stop the execution. Reporting in Columbia, Lucas Geisler, ABC 17 News. You can stay updated on this story as we'll be following it throughout the next few days. Updates will also be posted online at abc17news.com.